what it is. We back street knowledge report where we give y'all the stuff first, quick, fast, in a hurry. And make sure y'all go over to our podcast, Street Knowledge Podcast, and check out a lot of the new things we got over there for y'all. But um, you know, <clears throat> we want to get into something real deep right now. As y'all know, Jaguar Wright, she's been tearing the internet up with a lot of her theories of things that's going on with a lot of celebrities. Um, and I don't want people to take this in the wrong way, and I don't want her to take this in the wrong way. I just have to say a few things when I see, or should I say when I hear, something that I can't uh, agree with. And one of them is, um, she was saying how uh, Jay-Z lined up Big L, the rapper, the one of the, the biggest rappers in New York City back then in his time before he passed away. And um, she was saying that Jay-Z lined him up to actually get the top spot in the rap game because Big L was hot at the at its at his peak back then and <clears throat> you know actually he was one of the first guys to put Jay-Z on a record um so really I explained it on the Queen's Flip interview that I did and I'm gonna show y'all a quick a quick clip of what happened let's go Jax everything that Big L ever told me he never lied to me Lamont never lied to me and the last time I was with him he told me that you was gonna try to kill him. And he told me not to trust you. And he told me to watch out for you. And he told me that your greatest sin is coveting, Sean Carter. You're a coveter. I have no doubt in my mind that it was you that sent the shooter to shoot Beanie as soon as he got home. His mother was so terrified. We had to show at the TLA. I was there the second time because the first time we couldn't do it because you've been sent shooters to shoot this man and not to kill him. They shot him in his lung. So it would make it twice as hard for him to be able to perform effectively. I'm sick and tired of you, Sean. Now you f***ing with my website? Well, now y'all have it. Y'all heard it from her, from the horse's mouth. Now I'm going to get into a clip of where I explain what happened to Big L in real time. Let's go, Jax. What happened was Big L, Big Brother Lee. I can speak about it now because he's he's not here. What happened was it was four Big Lee and three other dudes it was best friends. And Big Lee and one of the other guys fell out. But two of them was more cooler than each other, and these other two was more cooler than each other. But one of the two was beefing with each other. Big Lee getting to it with one, and then <clears throat> the bullshit happens. Then the other friend couldn't get Big Lee because Big Lee was locked up. So what they do? They get Big L. So there you go. There y'all have it. Me explaining on the Queen's Flip podcast, actually, you know, what happened to L, to Big L. And, um... I don't want to say I'm. I don't, I don't want to look as if I'm discrediting, discrediting uh, Jaguar right. She might have her right of how she feel about what happened at the time. You know, she's a big artist in the game. She know a lot of people. She know a lot of big big wills in the game. But I just know Big L. That was a friend of mine's. So um. I just had to break it down because I don't feel it's right on that part to name something about Jay Z had Big L killed. So I, I, I'm, you know, I'm a fair guy. I don't think that it's fair to say somebody had somebody killed, and if somebody can really say that that person didn't have that person killed, it would be good that somebody speak out about it. So I don't, I, Jay Z did not have Big L killed, so we don't want to push that narrative out there, and maybe she don't know, maybe she feels she's defending a friend of hers, she might feel that Jay-Z might have, so Miss Jaguar Wright, I want to say to you that um, Jay-Z didn't have Big L killed, hopefully you can feel something, you know, it, it will ease 
your attention on that part. That somebody actually know that that didn't happen. Everybody in our neighborhood that grew up with us know Big L was not killed by Jay-Z. <clears throat> but we'll go into another clip that I did on the Queens Flip explaining. Because Big L was down here with me at one point in time when um, I had him on tour down here. It was quiet for Big L. It was quiet. So I grabbed him and brought him down here on tour. We'll show a clip of that. Let's go into it. McGruff is my brother. I did a lot of stuff for him. Had me, him, and Big L been on tour together. I brought them down. So I spent probably about 100000 doing some stuff with them when Big L was alive. Mm. Touring before he was got killed and was about to sign with Rockefeller. I was going to actually have him sign with me, but he told me he was about to sign with Rockefeller. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's do that. And, and we get on. So I was at his house. So, I was at his house. I was at Big L house. I just came from North Carolina. And, well, actually, after we finished running around touring down here, he went back home. I, I was still here. I sent him and Gruff back home. I said, <clears throat> I had an idea in my mind. I had a big budget that I had put together. I said, that being that we started the buzz back up with L, he was down in North Carolina running around with me. I said, yo, let me uh, let me run this past L. So I didn't call him and tell him. I wanted to tell him in his face. I had a big budget that I wanted to put up with him, being that we uh, started the buzz back. So I get to New York. I go to his house. And, you know, he was getting dressed that day. And um, I'm like, yo, bro, yo. Fuck all that. We, what we waiting for? Let's just go ahead and put the music back out there. Let's go ahead and put it back out. You can run. You can you can uh, partner up with me with my label, and um, and we put the music out. And he told me he said his exact words was, "Nah, bro. You know I would." He said, "But guess what? Jay Z and Dame Dash called me down want to set up a meeting for Flamboyant." Entertainment, which was his label that he was starting, and he said that they wanted to sign him to Rock to Rockefeller. So I'm telling him like, "Oh wow, that's crazy. That that's what's up." Well, you do that, and we could piggyback off that. He was like, "Exactly." So long story short, right after that, that's that's the time when he uh, actually got killed, and unfortunately. Um, he got shot and uh and got killed, passed away after the uh that tragic incident, and um we wasn't able to uh move forward with with a lot of things due to that situation. But actually, uh, there's a guy that has a book. His name is Lou. Y'all can go and check his book out. And um, he's the original NFL crew. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a touching situation. Even when I did the, uh, the Queen's Flip interview, a lot of people from the neighborhood was like, yo, that was really a touching situation. They really don't like touching on that situation because, you know, they try not to talk about it no more. But it was an ongoing thing. But L lost his life due to things of, you know, neighborhood stuff with his brother, his big brother Lee. The guy Gerard is the one that killed Big L. He actually is deceased now as well. Somebody killed him. So, you know, I'm just here to say... Miss Jaguar, right? You you probably a little bit off on that situation. I don't know about what else is going on. I don't like a person calling a person snitch if you don't see paperwork. I don't like nobody saying somebody killed somebody if nobody really killed nobody. So I can definitely say Jay Z didn't do that. And this is not throwing no shots and no punches at you. I don't have nothing to do with anything what's going on. Um. I'm just paying attention to what's going on and listening so I can learn something and actually do the journalism thing. So Big L was not killed 
by Jay Z. So I just wanted to clear that up for people that thought that he might have been because of you know the rumors that's going on out there. So now we want to get into something else. Wait, don't you got a mixtape? Yes. Oh yeah. So well, well, I'm glad you. I'm, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. As y'all can see, that's me. That's Big L when I was rapping. My brother Jay Black, which is Loon brother, and McGruff right there, by uh, by Big L as well. That's crazy. You brought that up, bro. And so, um, is that is that from the time when he was down here hanging out with you and, and McGruff? Well, what that was when the Paid in Full came out, it was a big big phenomenal man. It went the movie went crazy. So what I did was. I put together a mixtape and I already had them down here running with me. So being that I had them down here running with me, I said, let me go to put that. I actually got Rich Porter's sister on there, Pat Porter. I interviewed her. As y'all seen, y'all can go back and check on at the uh, Street Knowledge podcast where I interviewed Pat Porter, where she explains how she don't mind people mentioning Rich Porter's name, but don't forget the little brother that lost his life. 12 years old, got kidnapped and killed inside of the game, in that, that drug world, and he uh, was an innocent kid, but yeah, and that CD, y'all see, that was my first CD I ever put out when I was rapping, and Big L is on that, and I actually didn't have time to push it the way I want to as well, because he passed away, but... His name is up there on the credits. Me, it's Big Boosie featuring Big L McGruff. My brother Boog, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne B, Wayne Boog, Boogie Barnes. He did the beats for me. God bless him. That's A Z, the real A Z who wrote the Paid in Full movie. That's his brother. He did the uh, actual remix for me, with featuring Big L and McGruff. Um, I'm thinking about doing a video to it. It'll just be probably a video with pictures and stuff like that. I might put it on BET when my brother Big L birthday come out. So, just to show y'all that I'm really affiliated with Big L. That's my family. Had him running down here in North Carolina with me. So, but, um... Like I said, Miss Jaguar Wright, you you probably just off a little bit, but this is not throwing no punches at you. It's just to just enlighten you to make you feel a little better that your friend Big L was not killed by Jay Z. Being that you and you know you have a little gripes with Jay Z, so maybe that'll make you feel a little better towards your journey of what you got going on. That's all what this here is about. Or if you got some rebuttals and more inside information, please uh, go to Instagram to uh, Street Knowledge underscore podcast and DM us so that we can get you on the show to voice your opinions. And now we're going to get into something else. <laughs> Kanye West. Boy, my boy, my boy, stay, stay on the, stay on the uh, line. He ain't, he ain't. I got to give it to my boy. He ain't nothing to play with. He stand by what he stand by, he stand on. But one thing I do want to say, like my brother Dame say, people be trying to tear him down but not understanding. Like everybody say, Dame asks one question. Y'all know he he take his med, he takes meds, right? And they said, yeah. Said, all right. So why would people keep poking at the bear knowing that he take meds? Sometimes if you know something is going on with a person, why not just say, nah, I know what it is. Let me chill. Let me walk away. Don't try to make him go into a rant and, 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 and just start banging and banging at that door, knowing somebody's going to open that door. Y'all know he's going to go buck wild on you. Y'all know he's going to speak his mind. So paparazzi is out there acting crazy. He went there to pick his kids up. It's not a secret. He's very in tune with his kids. He loves his kids. He's going to bend backwards for his kids. And I think in this one, he what, skipped the line, Jax? 
uh, where yeah. his kid uh, at his kid's school or something. He he, uh, he went to go pick up his kids, and you know they have the the line out where everybody's you know parked out in front of the school to pick up their kids, and he wants to get in front of the line. And, you know, he's like, I guess, being belligerent, beeping, trying to get people to move. Right. And the dude, one, well, I got the clip where the guy's asking him, like, yo, what do you want us to do? It's like 100 people out here, you know? And he's like, everything stops when when I want to see my kid. Like, you know, I just think he needs to get over the whole, the world revolves around Kanye. That's that's my personal opinion. But, you know, I I, I feel bad for Kanye, man. I hope I hope everything starts to clear up for him. I hope things start getting better for him. I just think he's going about things the wrong way. Right, no doubt. But but this is this is my thing. Like I was just saying a second ago, I would have seen him and I would have been like once I would have known who that was, I would have been like, all right. Matter of fact, like yeah, because I'm not <laughs> I'm not going that route. <laughs> you know, it, that's Kanye. <laughs> we don't feel like going through it. It is what it is. He earned the right to do what he's doing, but he don't earn the right to skip a line. No disrespect to, to bro. Much love, much respect to Kanye all day long. I'm just saying, some people need to just stop trying to go back and forth with him. Like, why? That's a waste of time. It's just like with police stuff. I ain't going back and forth with no cop. If I'm going to jail, I'm going to jail. Cuff me and put me in the car, man. Let's get this over with. I ain't wasting no time. <laughs> and that's it. You Done it. To, you want me to run the clips or, you know, let the people? Yeah, uh, let, let, matter of fact, yeah, run the clips. Let's let the people see and decide. Y'all comment on the bottom and let us know what's going on, what y'all think about this situation. Running up on your kids games like that? Hey bro, what do you want me to do? Is everybody's here? Dude, you you know how it is every week, bro. I wanna just see my kids. I understand, bro, but it's not just me. It's it's a hundred of us. Everybody gotta stop when I see my kids. Bro, how, how, dude, like what do you want us to do? It's a hundred of us. I don't care how many. Well, oh, what do you want us to do? Do you wanna hear what I want you to yeah, do? Yeah, tell us what you want us to do. If I need to see my kids, why don't oh. you photograph them? Okay. You can't go home and see them? Like, what do you want us to do? It's a public place. Y'all ain't gonna run up on me like that. If I say stop. I wasn't running. If I say, it ain't running. I wasn't Stop with running. your cameras. I know what's funny. You're, you're a celebrity. You're a celebrity. You're a celebrity. Man, listen. So y'all let me know what y'all think about that. You know, I don't agree with what he did. Yo, that snatching the phone was out of pocket, bro. That ain't, yeah, that ain't good. That was crazy. But one thing I can say about Kanye, I was in the studio with Kanye, with Dame, and he showed us much love in there. Real respectful, very respectful. He liked his music loud now. He had a bunch of, uh, What's those earplugs? He had in his studio session. You got a, a whole. He had a whole big box, probably about two, three of them. Kanye, I mean, um, Akon brother Boo was up in there with him, and Mr. Bentley was in there. Uh, Puff, oh, um, uh, shout about Fonz for Bentley, yeah, man. Fonz, where he was up in there, and uh, <clears throat> the music loud as hell. You feel the bass through your chest. He jumping in the air. He was letting us hear his first album, and. He was so happy that Dame came through, man. He was like, damn, OG, I'm glad you came through, man. Show me love, man. It's like his spirit was lifted when he seen Dame Dash come up in there, man. That was that was big. That was a big moment for me. That was my first time meeting Kanye. And, you know, he was playing song after song and kept asking us, yo, how, how y'all like this one? How y'all like that one? And, you know, that's Kanye, hit after hit. If I ain't like something, I wouldn't have agreed upon it, but, you know, I was... Loving what I was hearing. And Dame was giving him the number one big input. And, you know, that really made his day. <clears throat> that made his day. And, like I said, he showed so much love. So, I, I can't say I seen a side of him that the world be showing. As if he's like an ignorant person all the time and stuff like No, that's that's not true. I could say I seen that firsthand. 
And I, and I love to be able to say the good things about a person. Because that's very important. We always feed off the negative. Negative travels so fast that people don't even want to hear about the good side. That shows you how much of, of the world love to hear corrupt or negative stuff. And it's faster. That means the devil is more powerful than... Or, you know, more powerful than, 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 than we actually know, man. You got to pay attention to that. The negative stuff is the devil. And God, he, you know, he works quiet. He, he let us make our own decisions. And he'll see who follows the devil. And that's why it works that way. So, but Kanye West is a good dude from what I've seen. So, it was that one time I was up in there with him on that part. Then, you know... A lot of my other friends. I missed the honor up um, viewing for the movie that he did at his house because I couldn't make it at the time. But a lot of my friends and peers was in there with Damon and they sh told me how much love that he showed them. And unfortunately, I hate to see my brother doing that, spiraling out like that, grabbing that phone because that phone now, they saying they're bringing charges up against him battery charges or something for snatching the phone and throwing it, but like I said, you know how he is about his kids as well as you might be about your kids, everybody out there, I am too, but some people just react different, hopefully he can go ahead and get that together, hopefully he don't go through a whole bunch of turmoil with the charges, hopefully he can just pay a fine or something and get that out of the way, but you know, that celebrity world, when you are like him, he's like the Michael Jackson. Nah, he's not like, excuse me. He is the Michael Jackson of hip-hop. And then he's out by himself. He needs security around him, and he's out by himself. And everybody's going to rush a person like that with them cameras. Everybody's going to rush. Anybody see Kanye walk to the grocery store right now, you them cameras is coming out, the whole grocery store, if they know who he is. So, um, I thought that I'd bring that to your attention, let y'all see what it is. Y'all give me some, uh, some of y'all opinions, drop some comments, make sure y'all like, subscribe, and, uh, it, 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 it's rough, man. I'm, I'm, I'm for a loss of words with that situation, so y'all, y'all keep me enlightened on that one. Now we're going to get into something real deep that's really trending and going crazy right now. We're going with uh, Tyree Nichols, the police, those five police in Memphis that did the most horrific act ever known to, besides, should I say, the Rodney King. The Rodney King. I'm, I'm kind of wondering if you would see those uh, five black cops beating a white man like that. We never seen it. If so, send me a, a a clip of two black men beating on a white man like that. Show me a clip of a few white policemen, should I say, beating on a white man like that more than one time. Because it probably did happen. But I'm just saying, the way they did this black guy... It's really crazy. We're going to go into a clip and show y'all right now. Let's go, Jax. So y'all can see how the police is actually handling the situation. Yeah, this footage is newly released body cam footage. Yeah, this is today because of all the other footage that was shown. It wasn't legitimate footage, but it was legitimate enough to bring awareness to this horrific situation. So I'm going to let y'all look at it a little bit. After uh, this clip right here, this is the clip where they actually tased him. 
he's gonna uh, get up and run away because he's he's telling them right now he didn't do anything. He's wondering why they're being so aggressive. And the dude is like, shut up or I'm gonna tase you. Shut up or I'm gonna tase you. Uh, you can YouTube the clip online. It's everywhere. Right. Um, but yeah, as you can see, he, he broke away from him when the first guy tased him because, you know, he was like, I'm out of here. Y'all crazy. Um, they they inevitably chased him down. And then that's, that's when they, they brutalized him and they just beating him with batons, which is the clip coming right up here in actually a couple seconds. So we have another clip. Yeah, it's actually tied into this clip. As okay. This clip uh, runs out. There it is, right there. That's um, live street cam footage from the. Uh, so they the just kicking him. Yeah, they're kicking him. Dude's gonna kick him in the head blatantly, and and then you're gonna see another uh, officer come by with a baton and just whack him like right that's in crazy. the head. That's crazy. You see him kick him in the head right then. Right. Yeah, like some old. Sh that's like some street stuff. And it's like yo, like why are they beating him like that? He's on the ground. And he, he's in cuffs? He's in cuffs. You see his hands is behind his back. They, He's outnumbered. He's on the ground. He's cuffed. That's not the worst part, though. What's the worst part? The worst part is when he's standing on his feet, and he got his hands behind his back. And they're they taking turns. Yeah, they're counting. Like, they're literally holding like this. And they watch him come around. Oh! And then he got his hands just like this. I you earlier. And he like this. Oh, we don't have that clip. We don't have the clip of them. It's, it's, that's right. It's right there. They know they want to. Oh, is that when they stand? They stood them up. Yeah. Oh, they cut it. They yeah. cut it on. Yeah, they all start taking turns on. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. well, that's crazy. So y'all go and check that out, and uh, we need to bring awareness to this type of stuff that's being done to our black men out here, and us as black men with with young boys growing up as black men, the Trayvon Martins and. You know, it, it's, it's getting out of control. So we have to bring awareness to this. Now, what's, what's crazy to me about the situation was which these guys deserved to get fired. They got fired immediately. Why don't white cops get fired immediately? White cops get, no, they get sent home with pay so they can go hang out at the beach and chill until the decisions is is sorted out. Then, then, not with just administrative leave. When they have a video actually showing a cop physically or really shooting a person, they still want to review the tape for a whole month with the cop out on administrative leave, getting a check. But when the black cops did it, stomping a person out, which they deserve to get fired, they automatically get fired. Not only that, now they are charged immediately. Immediately. It don't take long to review a tape like we're reviewing a tape right now. So I'm trying to understand what's the difference. And they just stomped them out. And I don't say stomp, just stomp them out like it's something, you know, soft or sweet. I'm just saying because uh, the past things with other officers, they actually shot and killed. They went up in, in a female house and got the wrong house. She in there playing a video game. Am I mistaken, Jax? She was playing a video game. Um, and they came to her house and shot and killed her. It's been a, a lady officer did it. I want to say. Yeah, yeah. It's, or, it's, it's been a, it's been a couple instances, man, with stuff like that. I know there was a lady cop who walked into the wrong apartment and shot a man. Right. That that, lived, that was living actually living in an apartment she thought was hers, and right. killed him, and, and nothing really happened to her. Right. And that was, and she thought it was her apartment. How That's, you don't know it's your apartment? Right. What kind of drugs you doing? And got off on that, and even if she got some time, which was a little bit of time. That still don't make it right. And then what was the other female? What was it the female Brianna yeah. Taylor? Oh, Brianna Taylor. Yeah, they uh they beat her in the back of the uh the the cop car, and then that's they Sandra let her Blaine. die in the in the in the jail cell. That's Sandra Blaine. Oh, that's Sandra Blaine. Oh, Brianna. man, it's so much. I'm getting people mixed up, and that's sad. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing. It's so many different incidences. That's sad. I can't even. It's, wow, you can't they're starting to remember. merge. The There's stories so are starting names. to merge together. It's crazy. And watching that video really, really ticked me off, man. That's crazy. That could have been my uncle, my brother, my father out there that they kicking. And then not only that, 
What made them five men in their mental look like they was just beating somebody up, jumping on somebody? Y'all police. Y'all supposed to apprehend, cuff, put them in the car. We know y'all gonna take y'all little sneak punches. I've been through it. I ate them little punches and went to the precinct and all that. But that's what y'all supposed to do. A cop told me before chasing me in that same park they filmed New Jack City in. I was just having fun dipping off on them in a the scooter. They chasing me down. They chasing me down. I jump off the scooter, run in the park. That same park where Pookie ran down the steps. And, and Ice-T had him in the, in the park. I was in that same park. But the car's going by. The police caught me. and he, the, the sergeant caught up. Once he caught up to us, the other ones had me roll over there and start hitting me in my stomach. <laughs> and told me. He said, yo, you lucky. Wow. You lucky them because people was, you know, it was up top in the mountains, if you know that part. And down below is the streets. And people seen the police presence up there. And they seen him hit me in my stomach. He kept hitting me in my stomach. But it ain't hurt. You know, adrenaline tr is, is kicking in. I don't care about none of that. The, the people kept yelling, get off that boy. Stop, get off that boy. Out of their cars. And he told me, he said, you lucky. I would have killed you in this park today. That's crazy. So that's how I know it's a God out here, wow. man. In real life. That's just one thing in my life as far as God is concerned that I know there's a God. But, so you know, y'all hit us up. Down low, um, I, my condolences goes out to, to Tyree Nichols' family. And um, hopefully, man, they get the justice that is well-deserved. The men need to really rot in prison. Somebody was telling me that they thinking that they're going to try and get a manslaughter charge for them because they're going to say that they didn't know that they was at least going to kill him by, you know, beating on him like that. That don't make sense. First of all, you shouldn't have been beating on him because that's not procedure. Y'all was not trained to apprehend and lock a person up that way. And it's obviously that y'all didn't care whether he died or not how y'all was whooping on him, hold him up, come from all the way back here, come back and hit him again, taking turns, hitting on this man. Who cares if you're mad? If you are an officer and you can't control your temper, whoever hired you need to stand accountable for what y'all did as well. Whoever trained y'all need to stand accountable for what y'all did. It need to go up the, up the chain. Man, Big Boosie for mayor. What y'all talking about? Because, yo, that's that's crazy right there in real life. Because now his family homesick. Y'all was somewhere with y'all family, but I'm glad y'all in jail. And I don't wish jail on nobody, but I wish it on y'all. Black cops is the most disgusting cops. Not all of them. Let me rephrase that. Because I know some that's very cool. I know one that saved my brother, my sister Chanel, who we interviewed earlier, Jax, her cousin. Okay. Is a cop. Which is like family me. We all sit down, ate dinner together at a family function. And, um... <clears throat> Man, that sounds like a movie. <laughs> we, got in, we got into something in Raleigh at the club with my brother. And the police was about to lock my brother up. Had his arm behind his back. And he was happened to, so happy to be out there. And I said, yo, that's my brother. The other cop was like, nah, he going to jail. I said, yo, let him go. He ain't do nothing. He said, nah, he going to jail. Wow. Had his arm behind his back. And I went and seen... Um, my sis cousin and I told him I said yo that's my brother man he ain't really do nothing just ask your, your boy to let him go and he went and said something to him and he let my brother go cause really my brother didn't do much it was just a whole bunch of stuff going on and this cop just grabbed who he wanted to grab so it's not all but them cops that actually um, just did what they did. They deserve everything that, that's coming to them. And I don't think no manslaughter is what they deserve. I got friends in jail that's doing life right now for drugs and never even got caught with drugs. Actually, I uh, did an interview on one of my homies, Face, from Face Diddy. Y'all can check that out on the Street Knowledge podcast. 
how he's in there for it's called ghost dope. When you yeah, make one crazy. sale, two an informant, they go back to the police, give that one sale you made, then they don't talk to him no more about sales. They bring the charges up on the guy that bought the drugs and they will let this one person that bought them drugs one time say that he came and bought drugs from him 10 more times without seeing the drugs, getting the drugs tested. Because when you get locked up for drugs, they got to test the drugs to make sure it's real. Because if it's not real, then the case is dismissed. They got to throw it out. So for them to say the first one might have got tested real, the, the ones after, if they didn't send him to do it, but he said he went there five or 10 more times and they never tested them, they still giving people time for that. So it's people in there with life. So these guys actually killed the man in front of the world on TV right now, stomping him, kicking him, looking like they macho. They probably was punks in school. Nine times out of ten, they was. And even if they wasn't, even a bully don't like to fight another bully. They, don't want, they only want to fight somebody they think that ain't really going to fight back. Me and Mugen Mace was uh, just talking about like them getting bullied in school and then you that's know, a fact getting jobs with you know authority figure type situation. That's crazy. Once once it, you put a badge on somebody, is that is that real? Is, is, are they really going through that? No, that's a well, fact. I was, I was a CEO. Yes, it's real. Wow, that's that's straight from Q to manager's mouth. Yeah, that's a fact. Wow, you put man. a badge on somebody. Yo, go get therapy, man. Don't be beating on people, man. <laughs> Straight up. Once you put a badge on somebody, they feel like they better than you. They feel they can do whatever they want to do. And then the track record already speaks for itself that police do whatever and get away with it. Period. That's a fact. So, it really doesn't... It really doesn't matter about how they was hitting and kicking. It matters that y'all did it. So if you wasn't knowing that you was going to kill, nobody know they was going to kill nobody. Even if you shoot a person, I ain't know I was going to kill him. I just shot him. I ain't know he was going to die. We ain't know that bullet was going to do that much damage in that flesh like that. Exactly. But he died. So, or she died. So they got to get held accountable for Every action that they did out there. It's been guys that I know, as soon as you put a gun on them, they want to act crazy. Yo, what's up? Yo, any nigga stepped at me. Anybody looking at me crazy. What? No, that ain't why you, why you got the gun on you, homie. You got the gun on you for just-in-case purposes. That's it. Don't get tough because you got a gun on you. Give a person a badge. Now they tough. Not only that, you give a person a lot of money and they are different and brand new and feel they better than somebody. Money turns a person into that type of... Preach, brother. And when you get like that, even when you got money, you burn a lot of bridges and it's lonely at the top. You have a lot of money with no friends. I'd rather have friends than money because... I can make more money with a lot of friends. Fact. I can't get a lot of friends with a lot of money. Get a lot of leeches. Understand that. You only get people that's around to act like they're they, your friend. They only around just because they want something. They around, they, 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 they around you because they have an alternative motive. You know what I'm saying? You know who your real friends is, but money turns people into the same type of people that was beating on that officer. Because a lot of people get tough when they get money too. You know why? Because they have a lot of people around them so they know them people going to hold them down. But y'all weren't tough when y'all had that money. So, you know, this this incident right here is really heartbreaking. Like I said, condolences to the family. I can't say I hope y'all can get around this because I know it's going to be hard due to the fact of the way it happened. He didn't die from cancer. He didn't die from uh, uh, died in his sleep. He didn't die from you know something where it still is gonna it still will hurt. But y'all could get over it because y'all could say he's with God now. He's not suffering from whatever he was going through. Y'all, these police sent this man to God when it wasn't his time to go, 
And even if it was his time to go, it shouldn't have been like that. So it's crazy. So yeah, this is the Street Knives Report. I'm going to leave y'all with something real heavy. This is something new that we doing. I'm going to leave y'all. <clears throat> this song is very important, and it was done by a white guy. And his name is Carson James. Carson James. And it's a very powerful song. It's about police that kill people illegally the way that they just did. And this song was ahead of his time. Him and Jerry White. So y'all go ahead and get into this song and y'all make sure that uh, y'all subscribe, comment, let us know how y'all like it. And y'all just watch the Street Knowledge Report with your boy Big Boosie. Make sure y'all go over to Street Knowledge, the podcast, man. Check those new things out. And we got some new things coming for y'all, man. Let's go, Jack. Just a crazy ass fucker with a pistol. Cops killing drivers, we can see how long the list go. Cops killing shooters, man, it really ain't no list though. So I'ma keep on going till the pigs know. And all the crazy shits know that this ain't how this shit go. Till they not killing over turning signals. They not thinking twice, they just letting shit go. Yeah.